Hello, so I just wanted to talk to you about the Gareth Pugh shoot we've just done, which was a film and a series of stills. This is my assistant, Britt. Hi. Um, she helps me on the shoots. Often she'll film while I'm taking photographs. Um, I want to talk to you just about the lighting we're using, which is this thing here, which is a, a ring light or a ring flash. Um, it's a, quite an old piece of machinery, um, as you can tell. Britt, what's it? Give us a bit of a history for it. So it was made in about the 1970s. Yeah. Um, it was made in London by a company called Strobe. They're actually not around anymore, um, but what's quite nice is that, that all the lights were handmade, so they're all quite specific, and when we've tried to replicate this light using modern lighting, um, it's never felt quite the same. No. Um, and Nick started using them in the 90s? Yeah, beginning of the 90s, probably for around, Shishado, probably 91, around for Shishado, for American Vogue, and I've kept on using it all the way through. The ring flash had a sort of renaissance in the middle of the 1990s, um, it was used a lot in the 1970s. It was a sort of uh, preferred light as a sort of death glamour photographers like Helmut Newton, Guy Bourdin, Chris von Wagenheim, because it brings a sort of kind of dark and sinister tone to a picture. So it's so direct. It mimics a little bit a sort of paparazzi light. Um, it was originally invented uh, as a dentistry light. It was invented to, um, you know, to allow the dentist to see clearly with, without any shadows. And I think it was the photographer Clifford Coffin that way back in the 1940s started using it. Uh, first of all, for fashion. Anyway, it didn't get used much in the 1970s, had a huge moment. Then it fell out of favour again uh, throughout the 80s, and I brought it back in the middle of the 90s, um, mainly for sort of vogue. Anyway, th this particular ring light or ring flash is very odd. It's, it's a very brutal light. It's very difficult. Britt, you have to hold it. So it's, um, This location pack you see here is incredibly heavy. Um, it actually is separated into three parts as well. So when you move it around, it's kind of, you have to carry it as quite a large piece of equipment. Um, when we're shooting with it as well, the way we hold it, if we show. So there, and the camera goes through the middle here, hence the name ring light. Our ring flash kit is actually a very big piece of equipment. It's actually a three person job when we use it. Um, our strobe pack you can see here is actually separated into three parts. So to carry it, you have to sort of separate it out and carry it in different um, pieces. Um, it's incredibly hard to push around. When we shoot with it, we take our flash head and we put it around next camera. Um, so one person holds this. The, another person um, uses the sync cable and attaches to the to the flash pack, and they have to push that around as well. And the other person follows with the power. So for us to use this one single light, it's actually a three man job, which kind of adds to the brutality of it and the physical being that it is. For the garage shoot, what he the location he found um, was a concrete building, a bit like a sort of car park, but completely empty, and. It was just bare concrete all the way through. Now I knew from ages ago from doing a shoot with Lady Gaga, if you start to photograph with a ring light in a dusty environment, and of course there's lots of concrete dust, what you get is any particle of dust that comes very close to the light, it gets really, really bright white. So it looks like a sort of snowstorm in front of the lens. When I found that out on the Lady Gaga Born This Way video, it wasn't a particularly good thing. So I had to find a way around that. But I remembered that. And when Gareth asked me to do the shoot, I, I remembered that effect. I really wanted to capitalise on that. Gareth's aesthetic is quite tough um, and quite a sort of powerful aesthetic. Um, and I wanted to bring something that felt brutal. I've always liked war photography. I've always liked the way that a film sort of reflects, the actual physicality of the film reflects the environment within which it was shot or taken. Um, and I wanted something that felt gritty and grainy and hard and quite distressed. Um, and so imagine if you found an old canister of film from sort of 50 years ago and you developed it and the light had seeped in and it's got all sort of light around the, the rebate and you've got sort of uh, a slightly destroyed film to it. There's a photographer called Mikoslav Tishy, I think his name is, a Russian photographer who used to make his own cameras and they have that effect and I've always liked that. I've liked the piece of film to actually feel like it's in some way reflecting the stress of the environment it was taken in. And I think that can definitely be seen as well from the model's point of view. As we were saying, these flash heads are incredibly powerful. And when Nick fires the camera and the flash goes off, it gives a very strong light to the model. From doing test shots with Nick, I've certainly experienced that when it goes off, you stand there for five minutes and you have these kind of um, rings of light filling the room because it's such powerful light and your eyes get a little bit distorted. It also kind of blocks off all your other senses because the light is so powerful, so then you have to sort of judge where you are. Um, what I think does help with it is 
when you see the light, that means that the model always knows where Nick's camera is because the camera is situated directly in the middle of the light. So I think that gives you quite a good connection to the model as well. Yeah, it's, it is, it, you know, it's, it's sort of like looking into a spotlight. So you just see that one bright light and it does sort of, to some way, not sensory deprive the model, but it loses everything else. So when you're on stage, you look out into spotlights, you can't see the audience. It's a bit that sort of feeling. It's just between you and, and, and the light. Um, so these are the ring lights. I've used them in lots of different ways. I've used them up mountains for American Vogue in the snow. I've used them for American Vogue in the sea, which is incredibly dangerous. They've been everywhere. The physical lights you can see here are the physical lights that Nick started shooting with in the 90s. Another part to these lights being quite a physical challenge when shooting with them is they actually get incredibly, incredibly hot. Um, when using them, the assistant has to use some quite tough industrial gloves. Um, using it at full power makes the handle go incredibly, incredibly hot. And I think even you get... Yeah, I get quite a bit of um, burnt. The aftermath. Uh, every time I look into the camera, uh, it sort of burns my forehead, which is charming. Um, when I was working with Lady Gaga on it, uh, one of the sessions I did with her, we worked with this for something like, I can't remember, 13 or 14 hours non-stop, uh, because that's the way Lady Gaga would perform. Um, and by that time, the light was so hot, you just had to touch it to get burned. So it's, it's a really brutal light. Um, the beauty of it is it's a very condensed and very pure light and it gives a very uh, unique sort of feel to it. Modern ring lights and ring flashes tend to be a lot more diffuse and not quite so, to so tough. Um, but anyway, I've used this in lots of different ways, but the way we used it with Gareth was in a particularly sort of brutal fashion.